guys, it's Kristen. Welcome back to another polymer clay earring video. This video is super special because it's the first in a series that I'm calling Artist Spotlight. And this is a series where I'm going to be spotlighting different polymer clay artists from all over. And they are kind enough to come on here and share with you guys some of their favorite tips and tricks and techniques for creating some really special and unique polymer clay earrings. I'm super excited to be featuring these talented artists and to be able to share them with you. So make sure that you show them some love by checking out their social media and websites. All of those things are going to be in the description box down below, as well as I'll be putting them on the screen and talking about them in this video. So let's dive right in. I'm so excited to introduce to you Adrienne of Margaret June Jewelry. You can find her on Instagram at Margaret June Jewelry. You can find her on TikTok as well as on Etsy. And I'm super excited because she is going to be sharing with you her really cute fall inspired pumpkin and sunflower polymer clay earring. So without further ado, here's Adrienne. Hello, today I'm gonna be doing a tutorial recreating this earring right here. As you can see, we have a pumpkin and some little sunflowers. This original earring was done on Sculpey Primo Granite. Um, I was unable to get my hands on that, so I actually made my own. Here it is. Um, I did this by combining white translucent, Sculpey white translucent, with a little bit of poppy seed, which is um, a Sculpey souffle color poppy seed. Um, I just did a little bit and then what I did was I took a piece of um, poppy seed as well. I formed it into a little tube and I baked this for about 10 minutes um, and then what I did is I took a tissue blade and I just cut it up into little baby pieces and I combined it creating this. It is not an exact replica of granite. Um, I think it'll end up working really well though. Um, if I had had some black and dark gold glitter, I probably would have added that, but um, it'll work for today's purposes. I already pre-cut some of my earring shapes over here, um, and I'm going to quickly review the colors you're going to need. So of course you're going to need either actual granite or some DIY granite. Um, you're going to need some brown, so I'm using Burnt Umber by Sculpey Primo. Um, this is a custom green that I just mixed from Sculpey Primo Forest Green and Sculpey Souffle Poppy Seed. This is um, Sculpey, Sculpey Souffle Cinnamon. This is a mixed yellow that I did. I believe this is Latte and maybe Cinnamon. I don't remember exactly, but it's just a dark, darker mustard yellow. I'm not sure how it's coming up on camera. Um, and then also finally, Yellow Ochre by Sculpey Souffle. So those are the colors we're gonna be using today. The tools I'm gonna be using are a tissue blade, an X-Acto knife, a needle tool, and an acrylic roller. Also, I will be utilizing a pasta machine, uh, which is off camera and really squeaky, so you won't have to listen to that, hopefully. Um, it, additionally, I'm also going to be using this to um, put in like a, a pre-drilled hole basically. Um, just a little marker so I know where to drill after I bake. Okay, so let's get started. I did forget to mention I'm also going to be using these. Um, this is actually from a set of cutters from Amazon. I do believe Kristen Nobles um, has linked these in her videos previously. So these are great. I'm probably gonna be using this one today. This is the largest one that comes in the pack. And then for those interested, this is the cutter I used. Um, I will provide the information on where I got it. I'm going to start with my pumpkin. So all I'm going to do is take the cutter and cut out a couple of circles. How you do this is completely up to you. You can choose to leave them as perfect circles. What I'm going to do is I am going to mush them ever so slightly so they are a little bit longer and like squished so they look a little bit more organic I guess you could say not not quite as perfect um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle tool 
which is which looks like this and I'm just going to gently add some details to my pumpkins I'm interrupting this video for one quick minute just to make sure that you know about all the amazing resources that we have for you over in our Etsy shop for polymer clay artists. So the first one is the complete guide to polymer clay earrings. This is a step-by-step -step guide, all the details of the best clays to use, conditioning your clay, baking your clay, literally everything is in this ebook, more than we can cover in videos and things like that, um, just because there's a ton of it. Um, a huge resource list with links and that sort of thing. So that's over in the Etsy shop. Another thing is the getting started on Etsy book. It's a complete guide to getting started on Etsy. So if you're just starting out and you're interested in selling your polymer clay earrings, this is a great resource for you to be able to hit the ground running, get those items listed and hopefully start making sales. Another one is our brand new product photography ebook. This one is huge. If you're selling online, your product photos need to stand out and be bright and beautiful. And sometimes that can be a little bit tricky if you don't have much experience. So this product photography ebook will walk you through the steps of getting fantastic photos with, um, you know, not super expensive equipment and things like that. Just little tricks and things that you can use to get the best photos possible. And lastly, we have polymer clay color recipes. So I have tons of kits over there with a huge variety of colors. I have a fall one that's out now, a Christmas one. Um, we've got pinks, purples, one with just like a wide variety. So those recipes tell you exactly what colors to blend together to make whatever color it is that you're looking for. So that's also a great resource for polymer clay artists. All right, I'm done with a little advertisement in this video. I hope you'll check us out on Etsy. The link will be in the description box down below and we are at etsy.com slash shop slash dashing and dainty. All right, let's get back to the video. Now I'm going to do is just take my earring and my little pumpkin and I'm going to place it right on that corner. Same with the other one. You can do opposite corners as well if you'd like or you can do the same corner. Um, I'm going to do opposite corners because I want to. <laughs> and then we're going to make little um, stumps or not stumps. We're going to make the stems. That's what they are. Stems. <laughs> I'm just going to take, um, a little bit of burnt umber and I'm going to just roll it until I get kind of a natural kind of point. I'm just going to slice that off. I'm going to place that just like that. Roll the end again. Place it just like that. So we have our pumpkins. Yay. So first part's done. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to make our little vine for our pumpkin. So I'm just going to take a little bit of our dark green mixture. Again, I made this using forest green primo and um, poppy seed souffle. And we're just going to roll this out into a really, really fine snake, I guess we'll call it, we'll call it a snake. I like to keep cutting it in half and removing the excess. When I do this, just to keep things organized and easy to roll. Okay, so when it's pretty thin, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half, and this is very, very touchy. It's a very touchy process, so I'm going to kind of start. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take my little snake, and I'm just gonna kind of place it at the edge of my pumpkin stem and I'm going to do some twirls. I'm 
And I like to use the needle tool to kind of place it where I want it. And you can always kind of maneuver it so it looks the way you want it to look. And I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna press it down gently. Now I'm gonna make another little loop-de-loop -loop twirl thing to kind of put on the pumpkin for continuity. Um, obviously you can do whatever you feel and you can make your pumpkin look however you want your pumpkin to look. So I'm going to trim off another little bit here. We're going to make a loop-de-loop. So I'm not too picky about these things because after all, these are handmade and they're fun and they're creative, so. It's like that's where it wants to go, so we're gonna put it right there. So this is what we are left with. We have a pumpkin and a vine, halfway there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to focus on our sunflowers. So um, this is not a hard process. It can be a little tedious, um, potentially. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, yellow ochre, and I've rolled this out pretty thin with my, um, oops, dog hair. I've rolled it out pretty thin with my pasta roller. Um, you can do this as thin or as thin as you as thin or as thick as you like. However, um, I find that you don't want it to be too thin or it's not going to like do what you want it to as far as the technique I'm gonna show you. Um, and then too thick, it'll just be the same thing. It'll just be too much, so. Okay, so to get started with our sunflower petals, um, you can kind of see, I already cut a couple here. But what we're gonna do is we're just going to take our X-Acto knife and we're just going to literally cut petal shaped petals. <laughs> so once we have a few petals, I'm gonna show you what I do. So you take a, a little petal you're going to take the not sharp side of your X-Acto knife. What I like to do is I kind of like to press and then use my fingers to make a petal. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start to layer this over one part of our pumpkin like this. So moving on, we're going to do our next petal right here. For this one, I'm just going to keep it at three petals like this um, and then move on to the other flowers I want to do. Just for reference, we are replicating this one right here. So this flower is going to be a little bit different because I'm not super happy with that one, but we're going to kind of mimic the placement of this earring that we have right here. So I'm going to move on to this flower right here. these petals over here but what I'm gonna do for the flower I want to put in this little section is I'm gonna make even smaller petals so these are these are rather large sunflower petals right so we're gonna do tiny ones and we're gonna make a full flower kind of in this area right here Something 
too is these flowers are pretty forgiving. So as you can see, my center of my flower looks pretty wonky, right? So um, a lot of, this is gonna improve greatly um, with our little sunflower centers that we're gonna make. So I'm gonna quickly do this one with my petals and we will continue on with our sunflower centers. This is what we have so far. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece that we made, that we used earlier for our pumpkin stems, um, and we're just going to kind of roll this out as well. And then I'm just going to cut little chunks off. You want them pretty uniform, but it also makes it look more organic if you have smaller ones and larger ones. Um, so you don't have to be too precise about this. Okay, we might not need all of these, but we'll have them if we need them. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to literally hand or finger roll these into little itty bitty teeny tiny dots of brown clay. And this is going to be our sunflower centers. Okay, so let's start with that. So you have a couple options here. So in this pair of earrings, you can kind of see close up that I utilized a dotting tool. So something like something like this to kind of dot, it was smaller than this one, but to kind of dot the centers of the sunflower down, which gives you some texture. So if you're somebody that likes the texture like this, definitely do that. Another option is to just kind of place them and then press them down with your fingers, um, which is what I'm gonna do. So let me show you how that looks. So I'm just gonna take some of these brown circle dot pieces and I'm just going to kind of place them like that and I'm gonna press them down. So it kind of gives you a look like this. So I'm gonna add a few more because you can see some yellow popping through. So we can see this is the result right here. And I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to continue that with the other flowers. So here is what we are left with. I find these flowers to be extremely forgiving. Um, and I always like to take a look and see if there's maybe something I want to add, you know, it's always important to review everything you're doing, you know, and tweak it as you go until you're perfectly happy with it. So I am happy with my flowers. So I'm going to go ahead and go on to my other one. Here we have it. We have our completed flowers with our pumpkin and our vine. Um, just to clarify as well, originally my plan was to use this pretty mustard yellow for this small flower here, but it got a little bit carried away with our yellow ochre, so that's optional. I think that would have added a lot of really nice dimension, um, but I still have that one over there, so maybe I'll still do it. <laughs> but yeah, so that was my intention, but I did not end up using that color, but it would be a beautiful color to use if you chose to. Um, another thing that is optional... Um, as you can see, this granite doesn't show up as, like, obviously in the background as this one does. Sorry, there we go. Um, so an option, because it doesn't look as, like, busy, is you could always add um, something to the stud part. And what I mean by that is you could very easily, especially because we have all of our leftover circles right here, you could cut just a few 
more yellow petals. If I had utilized this color, I think it would be really nice to do what I'm doing on the stud to match what would have been in this corner had I followed my original plan. So that's a really great way to add another, um, like tie in that color again if you did use that mustard yellow, which I highly recommend. I think that would be very pretty. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take three more um, petals like this. I'm gonna kind of take my stud, I'm gonna use it this way. So I'm gonna flip it and I'm going to kind of take these like this. Okay, so what that does is now you have a stud that ties in to your earring. So you have this option, or you can keep it classic, like my original pair. There we go. And you have both of these options, which are really beautiful. So if you want something a little bit more cohesive, um, you could go for this one right here, right here. Um, or if you just like something closer to this, obviously you would go with a simple stud. Um, both are great options. Both are beautiful. Um, I'll probably obviously end up adding some petals to this one to tie it all together. I'm very happy with the way these came out. I hope this tutorial was really easy to follow and I hope um, everyone's able to create their beautiful pumpkin and sunflower earrings as well. Thanks.